Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. Back down here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom with another video today. What I want to do today is I want to address some topics on the 10 C's of survivability. I don't want to beat that dead horse too bad because I have lots of videos on the 10 C's. But it still seems there are people out there who try to convolute this system to say that it's ineffective and give reasons why they think it's ineffective and the reasons don't make sense in the totality of the 10 C's of survivability because they don't look at it from the right perspective. And perspective is everything. The 10 C's of survivability was created to give you a basic category list of items that you would carry both on your person and in your backpack to help you affect short-term survivability. So 72 hours, four days, somewhere in that neighborhood. Beyond that, there are other things that you may want to carry. Am I telling you that you can only carry this and nothing else? Absolutely not. Am I telling you that you have to carry A, B, C, and D within those 10 Cs? Absolutely not. They're categories of items and you decide what works best for you. Now, one of the things I hear a lot that I want to address in this video is when it comes to first aid, all right? First aid is a big deal. To me, if you look at survival priorities, which a lot of people have this screwed up all over the internet as well, the very first one should be self-aid because if you're bleeding out, nothing else matters. If you look at that age-old list of the rule of threes, there's nothing in that rule of threes that covers bleeding, yet bleeding can kill you well faster than not being able to breathe or holding your breath. People can hold their breath for three, four, five minutes that are free divers without damage to their brain. People cannot bleed for that long from an arterial bleed and live to tell the tale. So that has to be your number one priority. With that said, an IFAC, you would think, would be part of that 10 Cs, right? Not necessarily. It depends on how you look at it. If you're looking at the highest priority level of those five Bs of self-aid, and I have lots of videos on that as well, but I will go ahead and put them on here. You have bleeding. That's number one. We just talked about that. You have brakes, sprains, and strains. So we'll just put brakes. You have burns, blisters, bites and stings, okay? These are the most common things that can happen to you in a wilderness environment. These are the five things you should be able to address with what you're carrying in your kit, all right? So remember this list when we're talking about what we're carrying in that 10 C's, because it's important to understand that. Does that mean I shouldn't carry an IFAC? Does that mean I'm not allowed to have any IFAC with me? It does not mean that at all. What it means is that these five C's are meant, or these 10 C's are meant to help you address these items if needed. And if you carry an IFAC, that's great. Personally, I don't. Now, what I do do, is make sure that I can address that number one highest level priority of bleeding because that's the one that can get me the quickest, right? I always tell students at the basic level, you know, if you only think about three things that are your survival priorities, don't bleed out, don't get too hot, don't get too cold. If you can take care of that, you're in pretty good shape. And the way we do that is by addressing them with the 10 C's of survivability. Now, let's go back to the bleeding, okay? I carry every day, and we've talked about this in videos, in my EDS system, a rat tourniquet in my front right pocket. Every day, every day, without fail. There's a lot of people out there that would say, oh, the rat tourniquets are junk, and you only can only use a cat tourniquet, and the cat tourniquet's the only thing that's effective. No, no, that's not true, okay? Is a rat tourniquet as good as a cat tourniquet? I have no idea whether it is or not. What I do know is it works better for me to get it on quickly and constrict an exterior limb where I might have an arterial bleed. It's small enough that I don't mind putting it in my pocket every single day and it will stop bleeding for me when I need it to. That's what's important and that's the only thing that's important. And if you look at that cat tourniquet, it is nothing more than a piece of stretching cordage. All right. None of these 10 C's of survivability was meant to be a one-off. I only carry one cutting tool. I only carry one way to start fire. I only carry a tarp. 
I don't carry a freaking, you know, I don't carry in on under. I don't carry something to sleep on, something to sleep in, something to sleep under. I only carry the tarp. It's never meant to be that way. It's always a category of items. Most of them have about three things that you should carry within those categories. Cutting tool as an example, knife, saw, multi-tool or SAK, combustion devices, three ways to start fire, cover element, in, on, under. It's simple, okay? And if you go down to the cordage, right? If I'm carrying bank line and I'm carrying paracord and I'm carrying a rat tourniquet, I have three types of cordage. Okay, because it wraps, ties, lashes, and binds. Therefore, it is cordage. So I do have that number one biggest priority of all covered within the first five C's of survivability. And when you talk about things like containers, if you look at my videos about camping from a four-wheeler, camping from my side-by-side, -side, there's a two-quart canteen on there in every single video on every single post but there's a stainless steel water bottle in my backpack. And this 10 C's of survivability was really meant for that. It's things that you carry on your person and in your backpack. And going back to that tourniquet, <clears throat> I would call BS to 90% of the people who say, well, I carry a cat tourniquet on my belt every day. Unless you're a medical professional, I doubt seriously you actually do that. But a rat tourniquet fits right in my front pocket. It's very comfortable. It's padded because it's just a wrap of material that's elastic and it doesn't cause me any problems at all. It doesn't get in my way. So it's very convenient for me to just throw in my pocket every day with my SAK, with my lighter, with my six feet of cordage, and I'm good to go. I have that same EDS system every day, day in and day out. And I always have it, whether I'm in town or whether I'm in the woods, I have that in my pocket. So I have that piece of cordage that covers bleeding, right? How I cover the rest of this stuff, I can do most of that with my kit without having to carry any type of external IFAC system. And I can use things off the landscape as well because I'm well versed in that situation. Now, if you're not and you want to carry an IFAC, is Dave telling you not to carry one? No, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is base your survival kit on these priorities. Use the 10 C's as a jumping off springboard. Build your kit the way you want to with what works for you the best. The reason this 10 C's was created was to make life simple. Not so that people could argue it, not so that people could say, well, that doesn't work. This is different, this is wrong. You should have this. A compass, what about a map? Well, you got shoes on, what about shoelaces? They kind of go together, right? So if I've got a compass and I've got a map of the area, I'm probably gonna carry the damn thing with me. I'm not just gonna leave it home and arbitrarily just take the compass. I have a navigation kit that includes a compass, that includes a map. It includes a protractor. It includes pens and pencils. And those are part of my navigational kit. But the compass is really the most critical part of that because that allows me to walk a straight line. If I only have the map, and that's my basis for the 10 C's is map or compass map, then I could be missing something else critical because the map goes with the compass. And without the compass, the map is no good unless you know exactly where you're at or at least have a really dang good idea to be able to use terrain association or find a major terrain feature close to you. Because without that, the map is utterly useless to you. If I dump you in the middle of this 4,000 acres out here and hand you a map and say, you're on your own, you are on your own. Because you're not going to find where you're at without a compass to be able to walk a straight line to a linear feature in one direction or another. It's just that simple. So carrying the compass is the utmost important, but it doesn't mean that you only carry the compass and nothing else. You carry the peripheral devices that go with the compass, just like you carry peripheral devices in multiple cutting tools, multiple containers, multiple color elements, multiple cordages. All those things are multiples, right? Cotton material. I would probably have a bandana and a big triple XL orange t-shirt so I can look like a traffic cone in the woods if I need to, if I need to get rescued. But I've got different types of cotton material that all fall into that same category of C's. And that's what's important to understand. So don't take it literally to one thing. Flashlight, same thing, candling device. It's something that puts off light. What that is for you doesn't really matter as long as it works for you. It could be a headlight, it could be a flashlight, it could be a pen light, it could be a lantern. Whatever it is that works for you, use it. I have reasons that I carry certain things within this 
Tennessee's category, certain items that I carry and don't carry for reasons that I've stated in lots of other videos. It doesn't mean it works for you. Whatever works for you is what you should do. Again, this 10 C's is a springboard, a jumping off point to give you an idea of how to build a survival kit. Don't overthink it, broad stroke it, because that's what you need to do to build a good survival kit that's going to work for you. Guys, I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.